we've kind of figured out the barn door opening that we need to do here. Um, the barn itself is only 16 feet wide, so it's not really that wide. Plus you subtract the width of each corner post. Um, and now we're down to a certain number. And then you also take into effect that I want to have inset barn doors, which means that I want um, the doors aren't going to, I want sliding barn doors, so I'm going to have two, two rolling barn doors, okay, they're not going to be swing out, they're going to be rolling, um, and I don't want them on the outside because I don't want the hardware needed to do a sliding barn door on the outside, I just don't like the looks of it, and I like the looks of an inset door better anyway, and also a sliding barn door on the outside of the building is pretty tough or tougher to to get weather tight and that's just not the look i'm going for i'm looking for an inset barn door type of look but i still want them to be rolling and i want them to be on cast iron rolling wheels on the inside mainly for aesthetics and that's just what i want so basically what that means is that we're down to a seven foot door opening and that means each door is going to be three foot six inches wide and I'll have about three feet nine inches clearance on each end to slide them open um, once I take into account the post and whatnot and seven foot wide is is wide enough um, the widest thing I'm going to put in here is my tractor and that's about five foot six so it's going to be a little snug back in it in there but it, it'll fit just fine Okay, so what I'm doing now is I've got the two halves cut and the concrete could be pretty straight. You know, I guess I don't know. Um, it's actually got a few waves in it, to tell you the truth. So whenever you've got a split opening like this, and normally, like if you frame it in a wall, you frame the wall up with a continuous piece on the bottom and then once it's all nailed down and secured then you cut your opening so it's on the same plane. Well here I can't really do that because I don't have number one a long enough 4x4 four four to do that. So a little trick is to lay out your two sides and then find a straight board or straight edge and stick it between your pieces And that will make sure that your two ends are on the same plane in your opening.
what I'm doing here is these two vertical 4x4s when we put them in I found these out of my pile and these were pretty straight but they were twisted of course like all of them did over the summer um, but I don't have any other ones so I decided to use them and I think they'll work out fine but now what I need to do is I need to put this top piece for my door opening in this 4x4 that I cut out of that leftover um, <clears throat> beam scab that I cut out of that twisted tie beam if you remember over the summer but in any event each one of these 4x4s has a little twist to it and so they're not square and so I can't just cut these ends square because it won't fit it won't look right so basically what I'm doing is I'm just taking a straight edge and I line it up with the 4x4 the vertical piece and draw a scribe line on this piece up here and I'll do that on both sides and then I'll follow that line when I cut and then it'll fit and you can see this line well you can't see but trust me the line's not straight let me just double check this one Basically, these two ends are going to be skewed. It's going to kind of look like a parallelogram. Let's see if it fits. Well, thanks for tagging along while we got the garage door framed in. Um, worked pretty good. We used a couple of my old 4x4s that I had laying over there. I knew I had two, two of them that were pretty straight. They were just twisted and they were not straight enough really to use as the sidewall girts. But I figured I could probably use them for something. And as it turns out, I needed them for the side posts. And they were twisted. And so that's why we had to scribe in that top piece. And that little trick that I showed you when we did that works really good. So remember that in case you have a situation like that. It fit perfect. Um, so, um, and that top piece only needs to be a 4x4. Four four. There doesn't need to be a header per se. Uh, the timber frame itself is the main structural component. Uh, there might be a little wind noise too it's kind of breezy out here today um, so I apologize for that but anyways that top piece you know I had to mill that out of a leftover piece from that one tie beam that was rotten um, and so I just cut that four by eight and half and got two four by fours out of it because I'll need those four by fours for framing in the window openings I'm not going to frame the window openings in yet because I don't need them to be framed in to do the steel skirting around the barn um, from four foot level up is going to be wood 
and four foot level down is going to be the steel. And so from four foot level up is where the windows will be and I'm still not exactly sure um, where I want to put them yet. So we'll just kind of not worry about framing them in for now and we'll just get that steel done. And that's what I'll be working on this week um, in the evenings is getting the steel siding started. We're actually going to start putting some skin on this building. That's pretty cool. Um, I went with eight feet tall. Uh, just because that's probably plenty tall and uh, that'll give me clearance on the top for my rollers and the track I'll use for the sliding barn door. I'm going to build my own track so um, that should be a pretty cool project but I needed that clearance underneath that tie beam to do that so that's why I went with an eight foot tall door. So yeah it turned out pretty good. Um, these old twisted four by fours finally found a home and I think they'll work out just fine so they're gonna be covered up with uh, with door trim anyway so you'll never see them but in any event it'll take me a little while to get the siding done anyway and there's a lot of pieces to how that goes together and I'll next time I'll kind of show you all those pieces and talk to you about the type of siding I'm using and why I'm using it so be sure and tune in then and we'll see you next time